Hello, my name is Jose. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be turning these kids' shoulder pads into golden armor from The Legend of Zelda. Okay, so I got these on Amazon. They are kids shoulder pads that they advertise as a Halloween costume. They are rather small, but the shoulder part's kind of the perfect size for what I'm looking for. As you can see, it kind of gives it a nice shoulder width. And I'm going to attempt to turn these into the golden shoulder pads that Zelda uses in some of the game designs. So we will see how that goes. Alright, so first thing I'm going to use the Sim Ripper to get the shoulder parts out. And I'm going to show you the paints I'll be using, which I'll discuss more later, to get the gold effect. And after I get those off the foam part, I cut off the little extra plastic tabs to make sure it has a nicer, more rounded shape around the shoulder area. Those are trash now. So next I use this little tool and I scrape off some of the logos to get a more of a smooth surface so I'm able to glue things onto them without it being an issue. Here I'm using the plastic sheets that I used in the past if you looked at my Samus Gone video that I made earlier in the year you will see what I use there so I'm drawing out some of the shapes that I'm thinking could work possibly for it and now I'm cutting out one of the shapes to see what it will look like now the finish part is going to be very differently I'm using these plastic pieces that I'm going to cut out and glue onto the shoulder pads because I plan to use Sculpty on top of them to create more of a three-dimensional shape and Sculpty is not really a flexible material but it's all I have so I kind of have to go with that so I'm going to use it as a base so it gives it more of a sturdy base to the Sculpty that I'm going to add on top that way I don't worry about the shoulder piece actually flexing and possibly cracking the Sculpty so I traced that piece that I'm going to have eight different versions of it on the shoulder pads and now I have all the shapes that I'm going to be using now I'm going to go ahead and glue them on. After adding the glue, I do use a heat gun to form the plastic more into the round shape of it so I don't have all the edges sticking up and then I use the clamp to kind of make sure that it stays in place and I do this similarly to all the other areas as well. So here are the parts that I'm going to be gluing on the sculpty on top. So here's what the design is going to look like. So next step is going to be the Sculpty. So, I'm using the Super Sculpty regular to create the shapes that I want to and I kind of want it for it to look a little bulky and heavy because the shoulder pads are so thin that I wanted to give it the impression of thickness through the air so that I'm adding on to it. So I'm going to go ahead and create the two square pieces straight onto the shoulder pads and I'm cutting into them to get more of a sharp dangerous shape to them so here's what it's going to end up looking like here I do the other side as well and I make sure that all the areas are put together so the sculpty you can actually bake or cook or harden in different ways the box is going to tell you to bake them um, in your kitchen oven but you're able to use a heat gun or you're able to boil them in order to get the uh, clay to harden. So this is what I'm going to be doing on this because I want for them to keep the shape of the shoulder pads and obviously 
the shoulder plaster are made out of plastic. If I put that in the oven, they're just gonna melt, and we don't want that. Um, so here I am refining all the shades for one of the pieces, and you would see I have a total of eight different um, shapes that are like this, and they're mirrored, so I have four and four, so instead of having to make all four of them by hand, I'm going to concentrate on making one the right shape that I want to, and then I'm going to go ahead and use the heat gun to harden the, the sculpey. Now I have to be careful because again, I am using this on plastic, so I'm using it on low heat level and I'm constantly moving the gun around. I don't want for the heat to be concentrated on the plastic, I want for it to heat up the sculpty so that when it dries or when it cools off it hardens but I don't want to melt the actual plastic. So now that I have this curvy shape that I need multiples of I'm going to grab some firm sculpty and I'm going to make a little mold of it so I'm getting the the Film sculpt be kind of softened and more moldable so that I am able to create the mold with it and I'm using that by just pressing it in within my hands. I did it outside of the picture frame because I forgot that I was recording and I needed to keep, capture that on the video. So this is what I'm doing right now. So I'm just getting it so that it is smoothly compacted so that when I go ahead and I press it onto the shape. I get a very clear mold and as you can see right here I'm just making sure it is pressed on as hard as possible so that it um, gets the correct shape so now that I do this the reason I use the firm sculpty because it is a firmer clay so it's going to hold the shape a lot better than what um, if I did it with the other sculpty so now I'm able to pull out the piece of the sculpt that I already had hardened and now we have our mold so obviously I had this piece being mirror so I had to create two molds so here they are the way I hardened these molds is I just baked it on my stove with a pot just with water you just drop it in and you can bake it so now I can grab some of the other sculpty and I made it so I can easily hold it in place and you just push it in and that's how you recreate the same piece over now I'm taking some of the excess out, that way it is able to sit flushly in the mold because this is going to allow for it to fit into the actual shoulder piece a lot better. And then I'm able to pull this piece out. And obviously in the process of pulling it out since it is a hard mold, it does lose some of its shape so what I do after that is I grab the original piece that is mirrored and I put them back to back so I can get the shape correct to the other forms that way they all match perfectly and we have a replication So here are all the pieces already created that I'm going to be using for both. Um, I used the molds, as you can see, I, I was able to get four and four of those shapes and then I have all the other pieces. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and glue them in place. And here we go. They are just glued in place and there's always going to be a little bit of a border that's sticking out. So I'm using some um, caulking and this is just going to be to get a smooth transition from the shoulder pad into the sculpted pieces and it kind of also gives it a, a look as if those pieces were actually um, combined into the shoulder pad like if they were um, soldier or whatever you call it into the shoulder pad instead of just having a piece that's literally just glued on top with the edges sticking out so this is just going to give it more of a realistic look to it as if a metalsmith actually made these pieces and combined them with heat into the shoulder pads. It's a little bit messy, but you know, just as you would with any house project, 
DIY projects where you have to caulk anything you just use some water your fingers and some time and you can clean it up and get it pretty smoothly uh, to have a very nice transition from the shoulder pads into the sculpted pieces Okay, now that's all done, I went ahead and I used some spray paint primer to get a basic coat on there. And then I was going to straight up just paint them by hand, but I did find that I had some gold spray paint, so I wanted to use that in order to just get a base coat. And obviously, this is another piece I made for the project on the first video, and it's a very different look, so I'm going to go back and treat the shoulder pads as I did the other sculpty pieces in that video, which I suggest you watch. Um, and I have these paints that I'm gonna be using. So first, I'm using Speedball Screen Printing Ink in opaque fabric. It's an opaque fabric gold paint, and I'm going to do about two layers of this. Now, having the gold layer underneath helped a lot because it did create a nice base stone to it but it's not the gold that I wanted so now that that's done I am using the brush and leaf interior gold leaf paint and this is going to finish off the look to have it be a more robust deep gold tone to it and it actually is a paint that smells really really bad so I have a lot of ventilation because it actually has um, I believe it actually has metal particles in the paint and that's what creates that specific gold look because to me this looks a lot more realistic gold than it did before with just a spray paint um so here we go looking at the two pieces they have a very similar shine and reaction to the light which to me is what i wanted to all look similar because it is all part of the same project so i hope you guys enjoy let me know what you guys thought comment like subscribe all that stuff have a good day bye Thanks for watching my video, make sure to like it, leave a comment below, and for more art related videos, go to my channel and subscribe.